We'll continue doing another example of find the slope of a line uh, given two points. So the two points we've been given are a negative 3, 1, and a negative 17, 2. We want to find the slope between um, those two points. Again, I'm going to model three methods. You just have to identify which one you have to do. And I would experiment with them for early on. And it depends on the situation. Uh, looking at negative 3, 1 doesn't look like a big deal, but that negative 17, 2, I don't know if I want to make a graph that goes out to negative 17, 2. So I may buy back away from that graph. I may make a table or use the formula. But if I do use a, a graph, I'm not going to make it a real accurate graph. I know negative 3, 1 would be about here. So there's my, my negative 3, 1. And then my negative 17, 2 is going to be out further and up higher. So negative 17, 2 would be out a little bit further and a little bit higher. So if I draw my line, I kind of can see that it has a little bit of a decreasing motion in it. So I can pick up on that. It's a negative slope. Now, if it's multiple choice, that may be all you need. Also, notice that it's not that steep. So the fraction is probably going to be a small fraction as well. It ain't going to be a, it's not going to be a very big fraction. Now, if I do the rise and run, it looks like it's going to rise up 1. And from a negative 3 to a 17, that looks like that's going to be a run of a, a 14 to the left. So what I'm picking up on is my slope is a, um, a negative 1 14th. Now if I make a table out of this, so um, I have a, a negative 3, 1 is one ordered pair, a negative 17, 2 is another ordered pair. Remember your slope is this concept of rise over the run. So that means you focus on the y's first. If it went from a 1 to a 2, that looks like an increase of 1. And that don't look like a 17. So it's a negative 17, 2. So if it went from a negative 3 to a negative 17, that looks like that went down 14. So again, my slope would be uh, 1 over negative 14. Or we can write that as a negative 1, 14. So the negative does not have to stay in the denominator there. Now, if I'm using my formula for changing y over the change in x, which means subtract those values, just label x1, y1, and label x2, y2, and those will give you some structure. So my slope is going to be uh, y2 minus y1, so 2 minus 1 is going to be the numerator. x2 minus x1, so that's going to be a negative 17, take away a negative 3. Again, 2 minus 1 would be 1. Negative 17 and the opposite of a negative 3, that's a negative 17 and a 3. So it's going to be 1 and a negative 17 and a 3, that's going to give me a, a negative 14. So remember your income and debt. That income is going to lose, pay off three of your debt, you're just going to be 14 in debt. And again, I could rewrite that as negative 1 14. That negative does not have to stay in the denominator. Now remember, there's only one negative in the problem, so it's either going to be in front, top, or bottom. But that does kind of verify my drawing that I did have a negative slope there. And it wasn't decreasing by much, so notice how we do have a pretty darn small number. 1 14th is not a very big fraction, so that does kind of make sense. Let's see what else we have. 